Induction stovetops are effective and highly responsive, but they do have one Achilles heel that's oftentimes misrepresented. In this video, I'll show you guys what I mean, and we're gonna use the thermal imaging camera to demonstrate a couple things. Let's dive in. Okay, so previously I actually did a video on induction stovetops, and I highly recommended the ducts top as a great introduction to induction cooking. In that video, I kind of failed to go into the details of coil size, which is incredibly important. And to be honest with you guys, I'm primarily a gas stovetop user, so I don't necessarily use induction stovetops, and I bought this one in particular for its portability and kind of to introduce myself to the world of induction cooking, because it is a very cool thing. So to summarize that video, I highly recommended this portable induction stovetop to kind of wet your feet a little bit and get you introduced to induction stovetops. And I went through all of the details and why in particular I recommended the duct stop. I wanted to do this video because I wanted to share insight to induction coil sizes, but I also wanted to talk about gas stovetops because recently they have been labeled as dangerous and it does seem like the world in general is moving away from gas stovetops. And for me, the only other option personally would be induction. So I think it'd be a good idea to talk about induction stovetops and how to buy the correct one. I'm really interested in hearing what you guys think. Do you think that gas stovetops are dangerous? Do you think the world's moving away from them? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so as I said earlier, coil size matters. The drawings or the markings that are on your induction stovetop are actually pretty misleading, and they're not necessarily representing the coil size or the size of the pan that you can use. Well, not all of them. Some manufacturers actually do a really good job of clearly listing or indicating the proper size pot or pan that you can actually use, but most of them don't. So ultimately, coil size, what's actually inside your induction stovetop, is really what matters. See, induction stovetops run on coils and magnets to produce oscillating electric fields and eddy currents. So the larger the coil size, the more oscillating electric fields you're gonna get, and the greater the eddy currents. So that's what actually heats up your pan, and it's using the pan itself to generate that heat. Like I said, induction's really cool. So to quickly summarize, the coil size is really important because it's going to tell you the size pot or pan that you can actually use and it's really going to help you understand the limitations of your induction stovetop. A lot of people will purchase a 10 inch cast iron skillet for example and they'll assume that the contact diameter is 10 inches. That's not the case. You'll have a 10 inch outer diameter and the inner diameter will be smaller. It might be 8 inches or so forth. So the coil size that's in your unit will only be able to contact or heat up the inside diameter. Let me show you guys what I mean. So we have a cast iron skillet here and if we take the measurement from lip to lip, it's roughly around eight and a half inches for the outside diameter. But if we look at the contact diameter or the inside diameter, it's about six and a half inches. So if you're using an induction stovetop that has a six inch coil, you're gonna be just fine with this cast iron skillet. Now, probably the biggest mistake that people make is with 12 inch skillets. It's roughly 12 inches. Now it's showing a little bit shorter, but this is a tape measure, a cheapy tape measure, so it's probably off, but yeah, we're around 12 inches. With the inside diameter showing about 10 inches. Just under 10 inches of contact, but if we're really looking at the contact surface, which is right here to right here, about nine inches of contact. So if you have a six inch diameter coil, you just don't have enough coil to make the proper contact to efficiently heat up a 12 inch skillet, which basically means your induction stovetop has some limitations. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to show you guys what I mean. Let's start off with this 10 inch skillet. Now, anytime you start up an induction stovetop and you have nothing in there, like I said, induction stovetops are incredibly efficient, so don't crank up the heat. Heat up your pan on low heat. Trust me, it goes a long way. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add in our water. And we're gonna let that water boil. So 
So we started off with a 10 inch skillet, which has a contact diameter of roughly eight inches or so. I really wanted to show here that the 10 inch skillet is the maximum size that this induction stovetop can accept. It's not the most efficient heat transfer, but it's still very usable. I still think that it's slightly too big for sauces and other really delicate work, but you can use it to do some searing or some light cooking. Now let's try something a lot smaller like this cast iron skillet. Cast iron is really heavy, it's dense, it has a lot of material. So it has a reputation for being really, really good at retaining heat just because of its sure mass. Cast iron is also almost indestructible. So let's see how fast cast iron can heat up and heat up the boiling water. Okay, if we take a look at the 8 inch cast iron skillet with about a 6 inch contact diameter, the thermal imaging camera is actually showing really good heat transfer and the bubbles are uniform. This cast iron skillet is actually the perfect size for this portable induction stovetop. Okay, now we're going to try a larger 12 inch skillet stainless steel pan. And I already know that this is going to be way too big for this induction stovetop. But what I'm hoping to show you guys today is just how inefficient the stovetop is. Hopefully the bubbles will show that and the thermal imaging camera will show that. This 12 inch three ply stainless steel skillet has a large contact diameter of about nine to 10 inches, which makes the stovetop really inefficient. It's not totally unusable, but if you look at the thermal imaging camera, as you move away from the center, you get a lot less thermal transfer, and that's because of the coil size. I really think that this induction stovetop, which has a six inch coil, is really only beneficial if you're using 10 inch skillets or below. So again, induction stovetops are amazing for their efficiency and their responsiveness, but they're kind of marketed in a very manipulative way. Those ring diameter sizes or the indicators that they have on the induction stovetops are very misleading. When buying an induction stovetop, whether it's a portable induction stovetop or an actual top for your kitchen, pay attention to the coil size and not the ring diameter. So make sure you look at the specifications from the manufacturer and you should see clearly what the internal coil size per burner is. If you don't see that, then it's probably gonna be falsely advertised. Now, unfortunately, a larger coil size means you're gonna to have to spend more money. That internal coil is really what the manufacturer is paying the most for. So you can expect it to be expensive and it's also gonna drive up your electrical bill somewhat. But I think if an induction stovetop is gonna be your primary means of cooking, then the extra power is gonna be well worth it in the long run. But since this portable induction stovetop is primarily being used by me to shoot these videos, I'm okay with the duck stop. I know its limitations, but for everything else, all my serious cooking happens at my gas stovetop. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative, and I will catch you on the next one.